You're listening to Sarah Talk. It's political. You could run a fucking pet rock against right. Donald Trump, and I would vote for the pet rock. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're at. Right uh, yeah. Now. Critical. One of the things that drives me nuts as an atheist is that my polling location is at a church. <laughs> and I don't I don't necessarily have a problem. I'm not going to like burst into flames walking into a church. Now, after being on this show and having heard your viewpoints on some things, my advice hmm. to you is don't test this. I won't burst into flames. <laughs> and positively, LGBT positive. In many states, you can still be evicted from housing simply for being gay or transgender. Stand and fight with us. Oh, and occasionally, completely absurd. I don't know if you've ever seen a lightning bug when he flies <laughs> around with a bell. flame, a light coming out of his behind. The lightning bug got a flame coming out of his butt. The oh, lightning. it's a beautiful night tonight. All the sodomites are out. <laughs> and now, from Orlando, Florida, your host, Sarah Austin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sarah Talk. Live Saturday night house party. The chat room is already hopping. Meow. Um, mm-hmm. Check it out. We have uh, the new Sarah cam. Yeah. It's so rude. <laughs> I feel so discriminated against. Well, you ha- so you have to look at the. At that yeah, one. but look, I'm like way all the way back here in the corner. <laughs> so rude. I told you how you can get your own. Yeah, Stand but on the then, table. Okay. Jump up and down. <laughs> Oh, oh! Don't think of yeah, don't, yeah, don't. <laughs> you can. Don't, don't show your titties on Facebook. Okay, uh, um, I'm in the corner. Nobody would be able to see anything, honestly. <laughs> no, it's covered by. The Michael rest. would see something because he's sitting next I'm to me, and then he lot. would throw up There's everywhere. There's lots of breasts <laughs> over here. Michael Kaplan back in the house with us. Uh, MK, it's darling. been a while. Yeah. Happy to see you again. I'm here. Hello, it's me. <laughs> Um, okay so before we get into the Hmm. stuff the stuff we're going to talk about sarah Sarah hasn't even started her drink yet i started drinking at seven oh yeah that's right you did (laughs) so um so let's start with that uh first we we did talk to evan tonight uh for those of you who've been following along evan evan is our uh our little buddy oh. who we followed through transition and oh and we talked to him tonight um we recorded it but there's it's going to take a little editing so there's there was no way I was going to get that ready to to roll back tonight I wasn't um, there for that yeah, you were so sitting you were in stuck traffic. in traffic yeah oh so either one of two things either I will release that as like a bonus episode or uh we'll use it in next week's show but yeah. I probably I'll release it as, as a bonus episode. We talked for well, about a half have, an hour. We have it's pretty a special. guest lined up next yes, week. Yes, we so do. That's right. That's right. We probably won't have time unless yeah. people want to stay late. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> also, in our Facebook, I don't know if I put this on Twitter or not, but in, uh, definitely in our Facebook, um, if you would like to record a bumper for the show, um, like when we come back from break and you hear Becca say, if you want to tell Sarah she's wrong, call this number. I'm going to start rotating through like other people saying things. So, like as a listener, if you want to call and tell Sarah record, she's wrong, <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you want to record a little something that just says, "Hey, this is Michael from Orlando, Florida, and you're listening to Sarah talk," or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, if That'd be you, cute. If you have a podcast of your own and you want to promote it, you can say, "Hey, I'm Michael from Michael's podcast," and it's the show about Michael, and you oh, should... Oh, God, hear. that's a great fucking show. you got to start it. <laughs> Listen, let's just start that shit right now. <laughs> so so, um, so we got a couple of these, and uh, I'm going to tie all of these stories together for you. You know what would be really cool is if you can get everybody to say it like at the same time and then merge them all together. Oh, that would be it, like a crowd? And a crowd just saying, <laughs> well... You know? Yeah. So here's one of the ones we've gotten, and I haven't I haven't been able to uh, even prepare it, or anything, it yet because yeah. we just got it. I love being prepared. Literally. This is Evan from Portage, Michigan. You are listening to Sarah Talk. Oh. Yeah, I love you, Evan. I love that, uh, Evan. That's amazing. So Morgan, cute. kiss him yes. all over. What he's a so great cute. Kid. <clears throat> Russell says he's working on his script for yeah. his. No, I bet he is. Um, yeah, you are. Russell also requested that he wants an eight to nine hour loop of the elevator music that you played. Oh, okay. Sure. I, I don't know why. Maybe for listening to it work uh, while he's not <laughs> listening to us. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> um, 
<laughs> um, okay, so then we need to do a go back from last week. We <clears throat> talked about the, what was that, Ohio law? Yes. I think it was Ohio. Where Maybe. they're uh, making it, uh, let me rewind that, where they're trying to make it yeah. so that um, the minute any state agency, school, employee, whatever, um, state employee becomes aware of a child who is trans, they have to notify the parents in writing immediately. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it and they can't provide treatment or literature or, or anything. So that was that's the context. What have you got? So I made a statement during the show that kind of something along the lines of, you know, I understand them wanting to do this for the younger children because the kids are little, but with older children, they know their parents and they know what they are, what they should expect. So maybe they need to talk to the kids before they notify parents. Mm -hmm. Um, And Morgan, I love you, girl. She called me out, (laughs) not specifically, but she, um, she said she wanted to point out that Evan was only six when he specifically stated that he did not want his dad to know that he was trans. Um, And I hadn't even really thought of that, but there is a, probably a large group of kids even at six right. that know whether or not their parents are going to accept right. them um so yep. i would like to recant my my previous <laughs> opinion and uh that's all okay yeah i just had never thought of it that way so thanks morgan yeah no that's good there's so many different <laughs> sides of everything so yeah. like everyone's learning so it's never wrong or right it's just like sometimes it's just you just grow yeah, bro. Um, everyone has lost their shit over this Scarlett Johansson thing. Have you guys been following this at all? I know we don't normally talk about like pop culture stuff. Well, I love pop culture, but you need to have a pop culture show then. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be great. But uh, so, Scarlett Johansson was cast to play a trans man in the movie Rub and Tug. A little too Whoa. far. <laughs> Wait, what? I haven't seen this at okay. all. Okay. So this, so this is a movie about, I, I, I guess this is like a real life story of a trans man or, or someone who did not identify as, uh, as a woman, right? Um, who owned a bunch of massage parlors back in the 70s mm. and 80s, right? Which were basically fronts for prostitution. <laughs> of course okay. they were. I love right. prostitution. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so they cast Scarlett Johansson to play mm. this trans man. Why? Exactly. Exactly. You don't think she'd be good? Well, That's... no, but... <sighs> okay, there's two sides to this coin, right? There's... Okay, yeah, she's sure, giving uh, a stage to trans visibility. Yeah, but there are so many trans men that could probably play that part just as good as her, if not yes. better. And I think it would be better because they've actually lived in those shoes. I see where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. Instead of them using somebody that's already going through that or gone through that, right? They're using somebody who has no idea. Like, I mean, right. and she's an actress, so okay, she went to acting school, but I don't know. I just she's feel pretty like, good, and she's a good. Yeah, actress. She's a great actress, but I I'll don't like know. Her, I'll lick her a couple times. Oh, Jesus, so, <laughs> not in the bottom area. That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> like across the cheek or something. Oh my goodness, Michael. Um, okay, butt cheek. And and so I've had like I've heard a lot of that that kind of sentiment from from a lot of cisgender people that are like and what's the problem with that like, right. I don't I don't understand um, and most most have come from a place of like genuinely want to wanting to understand like right. please tell me why this is a problem um, so as with most things queer related if you change some words around right. It, it highlights better, I think, what the problem is. Mm-hmm. So imagine a Hollywood where there are no men hired to play roles ever, and the women play all the roles. Didn't it used to be like that? Yeah, it was the reverse of that. It was the reverse in, of that, Back yeah. in... Um, Peter Pan. <sighs> The forties? I don't know. I don't know. No, no, no. Peter Pan was played by a woman. Like, it was like early Broadway theater, wasn't it? Yeah, but even before that, um, uh, old stage plays. Yeah, I can't think of the names of a uh, of the writers, but anyway, um, Rodgers and Hammerstein. No, no, no. No, I don't know what you're talking. Way about. back, way wow. back before. Oh, that. Well, I, way before 
anybody was before I love Lucy in this room that was born. Right. <laughs> like back in jolly old England. BC. Uh, back in the, BC. In the year, somebody will somebody will say and I'll be like, Yes, that's the guy. Yes, that's him. Um, okay. So so yes, they did used to do that. Like young boys played women's roles. And vice versa. Right. It's just Shakespeare. So Shakespeare in time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Shakespeare. Um so so yeah, so imagine that there are no and, and I, I specifically set up this scenario so that it's it's there's no men who work in Hollywood, right? Because typically it's the cis men who are like, oh, oh well, I don't have a problem. Yeah. Oh, is it that bad, Dan? Apparently it is. He's covering it because it's annoying. <laughs> oh wow. I'll, I'll have to turn it off then. Um I'll turn it off for you in a minute. Um so imagine if if Hollywood only hired black people and they like painted their faces white right and right. played all of the white characters mm -hmm. right it's kind of like that it's kind of like um you, you know blackface really having a cis person play a trans character mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and and I think in a deeper level you have, if you're casting cis people to play trans characters, it, it, it continues this stereotype that we're acting, that I'm just a man who's pretending to be a woman, or that women pretend to be men, and so that because of that, it, that's okay to have Scarlett Johansson do that. But it's still telling the story. Mm -hmm. If we went through everything, like if we have rich, rich people playing poor parts, but of course, a poor person would be able to play a poor part first better than a rich person because they don't have anything to do with it. So I guess there, I feel like there's a little bit of, of both. If you really go in there and really spread it out, of course, it would be told better by sure somebody. But I There's also a visibility factor, right? Yeah. Where imagine, I mean, and it wasn't that long ago, there were no gay people on TV like no, before well, what, Ellen? Oh, yeah, like, oh, there, Ellen broke just, the bubble. There were no gay people. They're and right now, they were, they were hidden. And right now, <clears throat> there are virtually no trans people. Um, so so she she caved to the pressure and released a statement that said, "Our cultural understanding of transgender people continues to advance, and I've learned a lot from the community since making my first statement about my casting and realized it was insensitive." I have great admiration and love for the trans community and I'm grateful that the conversation regarding inclusivity in Hollywood continues. And so she stepped down from playing this role. She did? Her original response that she was talking about there that, that kind of sparked all of this, um, she provided the statement to Bustle via her rep that said, quote, tell them they can be directed to Jeffrey Tambor, Jared Leto, and Felicity Huffman's reps for comment. And all. Oh, all of them are people who have also played mm -hmm. or cis people who have played trans characters. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about those actors. Jeffrey Tambor, um, at the beginning when Transparent first started, I think we were all just so damn excited to have nobody cared. a story about a trans person on, on the being made that nobody yeah. cared. Um, until, until he got embroiled in that sexual yeah. assault, uh, yeah, sexual yeah. harassment, uh, battle. Um, Huffman played a trans woman in Transamerica. I didn't see that. And uh, uh, Jared Leto played a, a trans woman in Dallas Buyers Club, which, thank you, Aaron, uh, that was a good movie. I, I kind of liked the, the movie. But it was just, like, not only was it just another cis person playing a trans role, but it, it that's that movie perpetuated this the narrative that, that trans people are sex workers. Yeah. Right. And some are, but not all are. <clears throat> So, so she uh, she stepped down from taking this role, and I think that was I, the right move. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, because if she didn't, she probably would have gotten creamed. She would have. She would. Well, it's. I think it's really hard when you're in the in the business because any decision you make, you never know whether it's going to backfire on you and ruin your career, or, or right. You know, and especially for a woman, you know, they don't have <laughs> forgiveness. The, for men they don't have that kind of power to just bounce back from stuff like that. Right. Women are, are the ones that are more um, susceptible to their careers ending because they've got crow's feet and because they've gained a little bit of weight or what, you know, when you're a woman in Hollywood, you have to look perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so on top of now you behave, you have to be perfect, look perfect. It's just ridiculous. Right. <clears throat> uh, we have some, some legislative political stories to talk about. Maine has become the first state to pass a conversion therapy ban. Woohoo. And then have it vetoed by the governor. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Last month, the legislature passed a bill that would have allowed the state to deny or revoke the professional license of any medical or mental health professional that tries to change the sexual orientation or gender identity of a minor, and rightly so. That's good law, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's too much evidence that this method doesn't work. It causes more harm than it could any possibly good could come from it. Um, and, and we talked with uh, Tim Rimmel. Mm-hmm. Back in episode uh, 116, it, like, okay, m- adults who, are me- who have the mental capacity to say, I'm willingly going to go into a program, that's one thing. But to, again, here we are with, you know, protecting your children, like, to take your kids to something like that, I, um, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Governor Paul LePage, Republican, of course, how surprised are you, mm-hmm. vetoed this perfectly good bill, saying, quote, This is so broad that licensed professionals would be prohibited from counseling an individual, even at the individual's own request, even though the bill was about minors who ostensibly can't consent to treatment because they're minors. But I think uh, the true colors really show from this statement from LePage, quote, parents have the right to seek counsel and treatment for their children from professionals who do not oppose the parents' own religious beliefs. Ah, there's the flag on the play. (sighs) When do we stop giving religion a pass when children are harmed? Oh, my God. And again, like, I'm not, I I don't want to abolish your special magic man. That's not, I would love for magical thinking to go away, but that's not what I'm out here working for. Um, But I just, I don't think this belief should give you unrestrained ownership and power to do whatever the hell you want with your children. Yeah. So they tried. 13 states now have banned conversion therapy, but Maine won't be one of them. This is what you just did to me. You went, oh, look, and you got me all up and high and excited about something, and then you went, You took it away. (laughs) If Mm. you do your homework, I'll give you a piece of chocolate. (laughs) I did my homework. Eh, it's too late. Dirty. <laughs> what? That's not fair. If you're going to crinkle things into the microphone. I'm not going to crinkle it. I thought about it. Put it in the microphone. Let your brother go crazy. <laughs> no. Here. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> he's going to be so upset. He's going to be. No, gonna... he, he, he's, he doesn't like the eating in the microphone. She doesn't like the crinkling in the yeah. microphone. Right. Um, another bill that's been filed, uh, Representative Joseph Kennedy and Senator Edward Markey have filed a bill in both houses called the Gay and Trans Panic Defense Prohibition Act. Um, so we've talked about this before, right? Uh, let's say your neighbor kills you and says, oh, God, uh, they go to court and then he says, well, I thought he was going to, you know, he he's gay and I thought he was going to try to like, touch me. yeah, do things to me. Oh. I know it's not like it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's more scared that he's going to enjoy it. <clears throat> um, so, while that's not like a legally binding, like not legally binding, it's not the word I want to use. It's not a, a an approved argument in court. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not something that you know is uh, is permitted necessarily or or accepted as a defense. <laughs> um. But if you can convince the jury that, you know, ah, he was trying to touch my pee-pee, so I killed him. Or or I thought, this is the word, I thought he was going to touch mm-hmm. me. He didn't even have to try. There, had, there didn't have to be any, like, any effort made. Just, I thought he was going, I thought he was gay, I thought he wanted me. He came so to I shake killed my- him. Yeah. That's awful. He, he got too close when he was shaking my hand. And I felt like... Right. I've... Right. There was a tingle in my pants, and I thought maybe mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a tingle in his too. These are the same idiots that are like, 
you know, oh, I don't care if you're, you know, just don't hit on me. Like, you know, yeah, that yeah, yeah, mentality, yeah. like they're so self-centered. They think they're God's gift and they're really not. Right. They can't even get a woman to like them. <laughs> so they assume. <laughs> right. All the gay guys. <clears throat> like them. I don't. Uh... So I'm going to leave the extra cam running. I switched it back on. <laughs> um, no, but because I want to be able to watch it back. Mm, okay. And, and kind it's of. Low, it's a low motion. No, right? this is like seven minutes behind. This is like way behind. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. What people see on Facebook is is a couple of minutes behind mm -hmm. the real well, real time. But um, oh, they're seeing it at the same time now. If there's a lag between the two different cameras, that's what I need to sort out. But this I need but I need to have yeah, the camera have on in order to figure it out. Okay, moving on. The U.S. House Appropriations Committee passed an amendment allowing taxpayer funded adoption agencies to deny LGBTQ families the ability to adopt a child based on religious objection. Oh, my God. Stupid crap. This is attached to a funding bill for the Departments of Labor, <laughs> Health, and Human Services, and Education. The amendment would cut 15% of federal adoption funding to states and localities that penalize adoption agencies that refuse to place children in families that conflict with the agency's sincerely held religious beliefs or, con or conviction. So first, so first, let's break this down, mm -hmm. right? Thanks to Hobby Lobby, uh, of course, businesses and agencies can now have religious beliefs where, you know, I think you would assume that people have beliefs, not businesses. But okay, Hobby Lobby shows us that that's not true. Um, so, so let's just say you have, um, uh, let's... Let's use Catholic Charities because that's I'm a little bit more familiar with them. Um, and some quotes on their website, right? Their website says, We are a faith-based agency. We believe that the best interests of any child are served by growing up in a healthy family with good religious and moral values. At least one of the adoptive parents should be between the ages of 25 and 50. The adoptive parents must be legally married as husband and wife for at least two years with no more than two previous marriages. No more. Good, reasonable health, no chronic mental health issues, yada, 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 right? So let's say that the state of Florida uh, would miraculously, this will never happen, would miraculously pass a law that says, um, it, you're an adoption agency, you cannot discriminate based on sexual orientation or gender identity. You have to adopt out to mm -hmm. you know any parent who meets other, all the other criteria any any anyone w willing to adopt as long as they meet all of the other criteria you can't go ah but they're gay right so if the state says you you as an adoption agency have to adopt these children out and if you don't we're going to fine you or some other penalty Right. Then the federal government can come back in and say, well, OK, then, Florida, if that's what you're going to be, we're going to take 15 percent of your funding away, 15 percent of the tax money that we give you as an adoption funding because you're being meanies to Jesus people, basically. <clears throat> Again, I get the feeling that they would rather kids live in orphanages than in a gay family. Oh, yeah. Of oh, course. Yeah. They, they would rather... Well, because most orphanages are run by religious... Uh, sure. ...church people. So, right. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, so, so you would rather them kind of basically not have family mm -hmm. than have a gay family. Right. Yep. So disgusting. disgusting. Yes. It's the sixth um, Morgan, Morgan says, so it would be cool if a 50-year-old man was married to a 20-year-old year, 22 year old woman. Yes. Nothing yeah. wrong in yes. that situation. They are perfectly it, fine it with that. It made me think, okay, so take that 50-year-old man and say he's on his third marriage to a 22-year-old mm -hmm. woman, but both yeah. of his previous wife's wives died of some right. health problem or whatever. Right. Could he then not adopt because he's been married three nope. times? Yep. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I mean... I don't know. I, well, maybe, maybe it's if he divorce was... specifically. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, if they died. <laughs> yeah, that'd be different. Well, that's different. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not really divorce if you killed them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Oh, shoot. That's not what I meant, but okay. Yeah. 
So this this bill would also bar the federal government from refusing to work with adoption agencies that discriminate. Um, it could allow. So this could also allow discrimination discrimination against interracial couples, interfaith couples, so single s- parents trying to adopt. Stupid, right? Because this religious privilege card trumps all others now. The amendment passed twenty nine twenty three, and and remember this is in committee. Mostly on party line with Representative Scott Taylor of Virginia, the only Republican to vote against it. And again, this isn't a final bill. It's just going through the process. Um, but definitely something to watch out for and uh, call your legislators. I just feel like if things keep going the way they're going, they're trying to make abortion illegal. Mm-hmm. They're not letting anybody adopt children unless they're Jesus freaks and happily mm-hmm. man and wife, right? Yep. So what's going to happen is you're going to have all of these young girls who made one mistake or got raped or whatever their story is, abandoning their children, and they're going to have all kinds of kids in the system without parents because nobody can adopt them legally. This is correct. Right. (laughs) So we're going to have a a flood of kids Mm -hmm. that are being probably hurt and molested in these places that say that they're so loyal to religion hurting them it's insane but and judging everybody else <sighs> right and what happens when uh all of these kids who are we can't place them in jesus homes so they go to like the jesus home right we start putting them uh in group housing dear republicans we need to raise your taxes because there are uh, uh, unadopted children who are living in these homes that need food and and clothes, a- education, and, and clo- all yeah. the things that they need. Can we raise your taxes 0.01 percent? Don't you raise my taxes? No, no new taxes. You can't have my taxes. Oh, I work hard for my money. You can't take my money. Not to then mention, adopt them out. Then not adopt to them to families that want them. Health care and medicine, yes. because you think about kids that that get put into those situations, you know, I, I just think of these young girls that mm-hmm. they're not getting the proper prenatal health. Who knows what kind of problems the kids are born with? I have a friend who who fostered kids from this woman who just she was addicted to drugs and every baby she had, she had to give up and every baby she had was born an addict. Yep. And so now the you know there's special needs that are involved with some of these babies and you it, it's just ridiculous. I mean Yep. <coughs> you going to be okay? Yeah. Do you need first aid? Do you need first aid? Do you need first aid? <coughs> Disney people will get that. <coughs> Michael. You need to step out I wasn't and get breathing. A... I was listening to the story. <laughs> <laughs> you Jeez. forgot to breathe. Michael, oh my, oh my God. God! Like color is the yes. color of your shirt there, man. Wow. Oh. Uh, I stop breathing once in a while. Yeah, that's, you should that's try that. Good. You should maybe have somebody look at that. Yeah, you should um, check that. Okay. Meanwhile, in the UK, a Christian doctor was let go by the British National Health Service, where he worked for 26 years, because he fails to identify transgender patients with their chosen pronouns. Oh wow. Uh, you can hear the outrage brigade respond to this one. This story comes from the Christian Post. <clears throat> David Makareth said that his belief, based on his faith and his profession, is that gender is determined at birth rather than something that can be chosen. Quote, I'm not, attracting, uh, not, attracting, I'm not attacking the transgender movement, but I'm defending my right to freedom of speech and freedom of belief. I don't believe I should be compelled to use specific pronouns. I'm not setting out to upset anyone, but if upsetting someone can lead to doctors being sacked, then... Oh, I should have read this in a British accent. You really should have. But if upsetting someone can lead to doctors being sacked, then as a society, we have to examine where we are going. You know, I'm not trying to offend anybody, (laughs) but but I believe in freedom of speech, and I have a few adjectives to describe (laughs) this man with, um, yeah, seriously. (sighs) Right. 
cunt comes to mind, but that's even too good for him. I don't even know. This isn't about upsetting someone. <clears throat> you fucking fuck. <laughs> Morgan, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. Oh, that's coming up later. Stick around for the for the racist. Um, that's the no, most common. We're racist. talking about not affirming people people's identities, and that can lead to suicide, right? We see that time and time again. This community has one of the highest rates of suicide. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of bullshit that contributes to it. Yeah. So much for first do no harm. Like this is the guy, just, he, he does not belong in healthcare. No. Period. He should be selling car insurance. No, he should be selling used cars. That might be a good career choice. I heard he's looking for a job. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Let me also say, while we're talking about the UK, spend half an hour on Twitter. Um, they have a major turf problem going on in the UK right now. Uh, I would love if, I know we have listeners, I see you in our stats, people listening from the UK. Um, mm -hmm. if, I would love for someone to call in and talk about like, some of the things that are going on over there. In a proper British accent, it, yeah, Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they, they have, uh, they're all over, especially social media and especially Twitter. Um, these, these turfs that are just kicking up the dust about how, you know, uh, men pretended to be women and yeah. It shows a complete <clears throat> lack of intelligence. Like that's, that's all I can say. <laughs> Educate yourself before you open your mouth. Speaking of uneducated, North Carolina <clears throat> is known for being a bit of a backward place. You're welcome for the segue. Thanks. Christian Republicans are known for being a bit of a backward people. And put all of that together, you get the next two stories. Lovely. A Republican congressional candidate in North Carolina believes that women are second-class citizens because the Bible tells him so. Wow. Well, what does that have to do with his position? His run for office? And office. Yeah. Nothing. Mark Harris is Ooh. a former Baptist pastor who... Of course he is. He won the Republican primary. Of course he did. Uh, now there's this video. I'm going to play this video, and you got to bear with us. It's like 13 minutes long. Do I need my vomit bucket? No, you don't. You'll be fine. Well, mm. maybe. maybe so, so hang with us. It's, it's kind of a long video, but it's totally worth it. This is from a 2013 sermon when Harris was the pastor of Charlotte's First Baptist Church. Uh, talking about God's plan for womanhood. One word, or one title, I should say, that is given to a man in all of Scripture. Did you know that? In fact, there is only one title that is given to women in all of Scripture. Only one title given to a man only one title given to a woman. Okay, who wants to go first? What's the title given to men? Oh, it's going to be so... Chauvinist? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. He's going to be... Gonna lean over. you got to move the Hold microphone Hold on, let down. me look it up. <laughs> I... Yes, you're actually... Keep that handy. If you're going to need it. I think... I, I might know where he's going, but go on. Well, no, he's going to tell you, so oh. you either know or you don't know. All right. He's going to say, like, in the kitchen... With the children. The title in all of Scripture, only one title given to a man, is head. Yeah. Titus. What? Yeah. That's what it is. is that yeah. all she's supposed to do is give him head? No. Head head of the house. Oh. Head over his wife. And the wife should be in submission to her man. What would her title be? What did I tell you? Chauvinist. Okay, here we go. The title okay. given to a woman is helper. Fuck you. And those titles in Scripture are speaking to the core identity, the core identity in a marriage of which everything else emerges in what we call family. Yeah. If, if, if I were to define the head for you today... Michael, define the head for us. <laughs> I got my hand on the bell. 
Uh, sure <laughs> and stubby and sucked back in. <laughs> oh, sounds like a bad Reverse day. Reverse penis. <laughs> I would call him piece of shit. A servant leader. He's the kind described over in Ephesians chapter five, where the word says, "Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for her." Pause. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. <clears throat> Damn. Who, who's the? Is Damn. he still? Dan this wants to so know, well. this is for you, <laughs> if you're going to play the audio of a 13-minute video, can Michael at least be shirtless? Hot studio. I, <laughs> hashtag hot studio. You want to <laughs> see my nipple? <laughs> <laughs> I have a private chat for that one. Mm. Oh. You can Dan is, Dan you is can married, so he's just, you know. <laughs> later, Michael, later. <laughs> I do three. Songs. Okay, um, a new Patreon level. Uh, if you <laughs> if you become a patron at X dollars per episode, you uh, get a private uh, live chat with uh, Michael. I will show you everything <laughs> you need to see. Jesus took those two words, <laughs> servant and leader, words that our 2013 world say are an oxymoron. They don't fit together. Servant, leader. And yet Jesus Christ took those two words that a world system calls an oxymoron and he blended them together and said, now that's a real man, servant leader. Anything else is a downgrade for any man. If I were to define the word helper for you today, oh, this guy I would... Define it as the servant lover. And that's why I want you to turn to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Got your Bible? Titus chapter 2. Chapter 2. I'll wait. Under anus. <laughs> Where is <laughs> Titus? I forgot. I used to know the order of the Bible books. You used to have them memorized? I did. I did that for a while, too. I could, Under I anus. I could I like, I rattle them off literally have to, to look you. this up in the... Anus. You're such a... I'm Good such XJW. A, such a bad Bible person. I can't remember if it's in the, <laughs> in right. the first part or the second part. Okay, I got it. It's where I want you to turn this morning. Can you just tell me the page number? <laughs> if we begin to dive in, as I promised you last week, as we started this series, we looked at a vision for motherhood. It was Mother's Day, of course. But I wanted to come this week and follow it up with a message. Who can find a woman of valor? I kind of want to go back and listen to his Mother's Day uh, sermon and see just how offensive that was. Titus 2 what now? I will get there. It's mm -hmm. awful. In fact, I, I, that title comes straight out of Proverbs 31 because in verse 10, one of the greatest privileges that, that I have as a pastor is, is doing memorial services or doing funeral services for folks that God has, has brought home. And I've got to tell you that some of the most meaningful and some of the most powerful are when those incredible women of valor or women of God that he has taken home provides the opportunity for me to share in that service and I'm able to go to Proverbs 31 which starts with verse 10 where the last chapter in the book of wisdom raises the question of all questions where can you find a virtuous woman Proverbs 31:10 <laughs> Was it Proverbs? No, Titus. Was it Titus 31.10 or Proverbs? It was Proverbs. I got Titus. Oh, that's right. He's going to read it. And that word literally means a woman of valor. And so where do you find a woman of valor in 2013? How did we get from virtuous equals valor? Do you want to know what the Jehovah's Witness Bible says? Please. A capable wife who can... who. A capable wife who can find... Apparently that's a question because it ends with a question mark. It doesn't structure like a sentence a question whatever right her value is far more than that of corals oh okay that's special isn't it okay go on where do you find the helper in 2013 where do you find the servant lover if you will in 2013 titus chapter 2 would you stand in honor of the reading of the word of god what church makes you stand because we're going to read special words? I've been to a church like that. Like, not my church, but like I was, I mean, I, okay, let me, okay. <laughs> so 
I think it was, it had to be like funerals on my mom's side of the family because they're, okay. they're all the religious ones. Every single funeral. Stand, sit, kneel, and it was always like but, they when you, you were singing a song yeah, or yeah. when they were reading. There, yeah. Were they Catholic? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, Catholics different. Like Is they it? they are very ritualistic in their yeah, stand, okay. sit, sing. I was like, I, that doesn't surprise me because I've seen it. But. Some of the so a couple of the different churches that I went to when I was younger, um, it it was sort of ritualistic in that way where like there were certain points where we would stand <clears> and sing. <throat> For the most part, if you were singing, you were standing. Yeah. Um, but like, okay, here, let me read from the Bible. Uh, you don't necessarily need to stand up for that. But anyway, I digress. This is going to take forever to get through if I keep. <laughs> oh, shit. Verse 4 and verse 5. Here you go. Titus. Shit. 2, 4, and 5. Look at verse 3, verse 4, mm. and verse 5. Okay, what do you got? What's the J-dubs say? Likewise, let the aged women be reverent in behavior, not slanderous, neither enslaved to a lot of wine, teachers of what is good, that they may recall the young women to their senses, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sound in mind, chaste, workers at home, good subjecting, oh, good, cool, subjecting themselves to their own husbands, Mm -hmm. So that the word of God may not be spoken of abusively. Okay. That's pretty close. <laughs> oh, shoot. Women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, Chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Now that's interesting statement there. That the word of God may not be blasphemed. Wow. Excuse me while I blaspheme for a moment. I hate when I blaspheme. It always makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I would say this is pretty important stuff, wouldn't you? No. Well, no, not really. No. no. Are no. we able to go to his thing? I want to. I would. I would you want to like, go to his church? I would like to stand up and say some shit. <laughs> 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 Who is listening to? How many people listen to him? Um, probably. Probably. I don't know how. Uh. So he. This was when he was a pastor of a congregation. Yeah, he's not. Now anymore. I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, yeah. Um, but he's definitely running for Congress. He We're talking should. about blasphemy here. And, and fulfilling the roles or fulfilling the titles are what help protect from blasphemy? <laughs> Father, I just pray that you'll speak to our hearts in these next few moments. Father, I hope you speak and to I his friggin' head. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get your hopes up. <clears throat> just pray that you would hear and, Lord, speak into all of our hearts. And hear our voices calling out to you to meet us at our very point of need. Father, I, I realize that, that this message today is a challenging message. I realize that this message today is not politically correct in 2013. I realize mm. this message today could cause upheaval. I realize this message today could cause some to stop and reassess everything. But Lord, you have called me to declare, thus saith the Lord God in accordance to your word and I can do nothing less than to just share the word that is here before us and I pray you. that this morning that you would speak to us and that each of us would have minds and hearts that are open and that hear your voice and I just pray personally that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight in Jesus name I pray amen you may be seated yeah look back there at Titus Wait, they've been standing this whole, whole time? time what the fuck two you see the older women are being exhorted to teach the young women right and and they're being exhorted to teach them some very specific things which I've noticed to be honest with you are timeless principles how to cook how to clean Russell Republicans don't understand what separation of church and state actually is supposed to mean 
You have to read his comment if you're going to respond to it. You have to read it. Well, I can't because it's jumbled. (laughs) Now he feels judged. Russell says, so he was a pastor and is running for government office. Separation of church and state. What the F of that does this guy not understand? Right. So I would. So the answer to that is um, people of religious faith can run for office. Uh, whether whether that's a good or a bad thing or not. Like, well, yeah, I don't think that's what he was talking about. I think he was saying... If you're a pastor, you can run for office. Yeah. You no. C- you can. Yeah, I don't think that's what Russell was oh, saying. What was he trying I, to say? I think he was trying to say, why like. doesn't this guy understand... That's blasphemous. I don't know. Maybe not. I could be wrong. It didn't read that way to me, but... Yeah, okay. They don't, they don't just come for a season and are gone. They are absolutely timeless. Look, look at what they're told to do in verse 3, 4, and 5. I notice they're told to love their husbands. In other words, available to them. I notice they're told to love their children. And again, available to them. I, I'm, I notice here they're told to be sensible. Women are told to be sensible. You can't do it all. And we're told that they're to be pure. They're to be discreet. Listen, they're to be workers. That Listen, that they're to be the kind that the word of God may not be dishonored so listen as the servant lover ladies the servant lover this morning or I prefer to call her the woman of valor this morning because God's Word gives us a picture of her and tells us what is at the core of what you were created to be what is at the core of what you were created to be a supporter, a nurturer, a caregiver. Can men be supporters? Yeah. Can men be caregivers? Yeah. Can men be nurturers? Yeah. Then close your fucking book. Hello. And your mouth. I do that all by myself. Right? I'm and a ladies, single dad. Listen, that's your essential calling by God that is absolutely irreplaceable in a relationship that is ever going to be successful. That's what the word says. Bull donkey. That's what men wrote in that damn book because they wanted to have all the control mm-hmm. while all those women just sat in the back washing their feet. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Preach. That's what the designer, the God of this universe who created Adam and created Eve and formed the first family right there in the Garden of Eden. It's essential. Yeah, I'm essential. And I want you to hear me this morning because I want to make something perfectly clear. There's no doubt I'm going to be misquoted. No doubt that I'm going to be taken out of context this morning. No doubt that people are going to twist what I've said. But I want to make this clear this morning. When I talk about what is absolutely irreplaceable in a relationship that's to be successful, I'm not talking about that this means you're to be barefoot and pregnant. Oh, you kind of are. Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, you kind of are. And you're adding a bunch of other things with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Clean the house. This and... doesn't mean that you can't be a woman going to the office, can't be a woman carrying a briefcase. Doesn't mean you can't be a woman sitting at an executive board table. But what it does mean... When you get home, when you're in your house, you are to, bow. You are to submit to the man. Make me a sandwich, See, bitch. Now, how does that mm-hmm. work when you go to work and you're trying to be a woman, but you still have to fucking listen to the man? Like, how does she get anywhere? What? Welcome to the universe. And you know what? Here's the other part of this. All these Republicans that don't want to, like, you. raise the minimum wage. Mm-hmm. If we had sustainable living wages, the woman or the man, whoever wanted to be, could be at home and be that sure. person. But now, yeah. Wouldn't have everybody's got to go to work. Yep. So it's just not ideal. So just take that and shove it up your cherry pie. <laughs> cherry pie. Don't even give him a cherry pie. No, Is she... <laughs> that who you are, ma'am, you must understand your core calling. And as long as you understand your core calling and who you are and that that guides everything you do and that guides all of the decisions you make so that your core calling stays intact, well, you can be anything and do anything that you want to do. No, you can't. No, Apparently you can't. not. No. no, you can't. 
You this... can't tell. He's saying you can have it both ways. You can't have he's, it both ways. Yeah, mm-hmm. obviously contradicting you can't himself. Tell a girl that she's got no, there's no respect for her, and then tell her she can go out there and do anything. She mm-hmm. I wonder if this guy has daughters. There's uh, now th- that's They're gonna end up doing oh. I don't know if he has daughters or not. Um, but he talks about. Oh fuck! Yeah, <laughs> that's what that means. It's not about so much the things we do or don't do. It's knowing what that core calling is and knowing what God's design ultimately means. You see, I've, I've got to just tell you, there's a real burden on my heart this morning for this message. And I'll tell you why. Because after 24 years of, of being a pastor, probably about 5 to 10 years into it, I realized that there were a number of young families in our culture that have no idea what biblical family is all about. I think that's a great thing. What's the problem? What is biblical? Is that the headship yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, that's just... I recognize that we have numbers of young families in our culture that have never been taught any of the truths of God's word. About okay, we rel- need to talk about the definition of the word truth, sir. The truths of God's word. Yeah, that's kind of contradictory. Right. So again, like if you're claim and see this is this is where when I was in that one on one Bible study with that pastor of the Church of God, it was like we were reading the book together mm-hmm. and he would give me assignments, go home and read these chapters, and I want you to write down all the truths and all the promises. You're using the word truth differently. Mm-hmm. And and we need to be like make the distinction of like what do you think truth is? Because well, it's written in my book does not right. make it true. Yeah. Okay. Families in our culture that have never been taught any of the truths of God's word about relationships, much less the family unit. And, and I felt led years ago to, to lead a group of men through Robert Lewis's work called Men's Fraternity. And he deals with this very issue in that study. And I got to tell you personally, from my perspective as a man, it radically changed my thinking. It radically called me to be accountable for the role that I play in helping my wife fulfill the plans that God has for her. You're not the helper, sir. She's the helper. You can't help her with her plans, with the plans God's plan for her life, because you're not the helper. She's the helper. You see, there's a number of new believers who have never learned what family's about. There's a generation of destruction that's gone on in our culture while the church basically has just remained silent. Oh, no. No, no, no. They have not been silent, sir. <laughs> you might have your fingers in your ears, but right? uh, nobody is silent. Right. This is like that. They're taking away my freedom of speech. You just said it out loud and people heard you. <laughs> so how is that? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's gagged you. Right. Nobody's... The That's church like... isn't saying anything. Sir, you're actually saying something right this minute. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because there's been a failure among many of us to really call the nation and to call the church back to biblical principles and practices. So I'm just going to tell you up front this morning, I, I want you to hear my heart. Oh, that would be an interesting... Bum, 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 <laughs> you could just... You could just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You needed to do it, like, really loud, though, to be obnoxious, because okay. I'm sure his heart is obnoxious. Because... In my heart is the desire to call all of us back to a real understanding of real biblical womanhood. Now, in a couple weeks, man, you're going to get your shot because we're going to look at what it means biblically to be a real man. Mm. But I can't wait for that. He doesn't even know what it means to be a real freaking man. Let me give you an example of biblical womanhood. Mm -hmm. You get raped, and now you got to marry the guy. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> right. <sighs> what right. But I want us to understand real quickly this morning, if you have a piece of paper, or pencil, or pen, we're going to look at these verses. But, but I want to say to you up front, I think there's some serious difficulties today. 
We've created a culture and created an environment that have made it extremely difficult for any woman that's sitting in here today, if you were indeed to determine, I want to live out and fulfill God's design and God's plan for biblical womanhood. We've created a lot of barriers. We've created a lot of serious, serious challenges that have made it difficult to do that. The first one I'll mention to you, and you might want to jot down, is, is we've had in our own culture a new supreme pursuit. There is a new supreme pursuit from the traditional pursuit of being a wife or a mother to the new pursuit of simply a career, independence, and sameness. What is wrong with any of that? What is wrong with wanting to have a career? Wanting to do more than just be Did he say sameness? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is he afraid of the word equality? <laughs> yeah, probably. Douchebag. Okay. All three of those run together if we're not careful. You and I know that in our culture today, girls are taught from grade school that we tell them that what is most honorable in life is a career. And their ultimate goal in life is simply to be able to grow up and be independent of anyone or anything. Yes, that is what we teach our young girls. Yes. Yes, it is. And it is not incorrect, sir. Right. We tell young girls to not be connected humanly as they are designed to do naturally, mm. but instead disconnected so as to be able to do anything they want, any time they want. But nobody has seemed to ask the question that I think is critically important to ask. Is that a healthy pursuit? Yes. Yes. For society? Yes. Yes. Is that the healthiest pursuit for our homes? Yes. yes. Is that the healthiest pursuit for our children? Yes. yes. Hello. Is that the healthiest pursuit for the sexes? Yes. yes. In our generation? <laughs> this guy's giving me a God. head. Now, it's now almost please. Done. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have heard were my you call. Just, you were praying for it to be uh, over, and it's that. over. There was, that was literally so, like five seconds left. What a waste. Oh, right. Of, a Sunday. What a, what a waste of a Sunday morning. This is... I, what a, Morgan, this I is the guy who's running for some office in North Carolina. North Carolina, yep. He used to be a Baptist pastor. Used to be. He's going to be... He used to be a lot of stuff. I, you know... He's going to die and very unhappy. I'm going to tell you right now. He'll, he'll either die very unhappy. Well, he's probably going to die very unhappy. But I just can't imagine. And I lived that in that bubble. Yes. And now that I'm not in that bubble, I feel sorry for these people. Right. Well, so tell me, uh, having grown up in a, in a church that said, you don't need to go to school. You're not going to need that because you're going to get married. And, and you're going to have a man take care mm -hmm. of you. And you won't need that. Or... Because Jesus is coming back and rapture, and right. you won't oh, be in paradise. Oh, I wasn't supposed to graduate high school because right. Armageddon was coming. Well, I didn't yeah. graduate high school because Armageddon was coming, and, uh, well, why bother? Right. Uh, you know, so <laughs> there's that, and then there's, you know, the the pursuit of a career um, or just... I had a hard time because I was older than most of the other girls uh -huh. and still single, like still not married, had a, you know, just crap shoot of crappy relationships that never solidified into anything. Right. But all of my friends got married uh -huh. super young uh -huh. and it made me miserable because I thought there was something wrong with me and every, Oh, just pray to Jehovah about it. Blah, blah, frickety blah. And it really, <laughs> It does something to you because you're told your whole life you're going to find a great young man to marry and he's going to take care of you and you're going to serve Jehovah and you're going to live in paradise and all this nonsense, right? And then none of that happens. Right. And you're left with nothing because, oh, by the way, don't go to school. Don't get an education. Don't learn how to take care of yourself. I didn't even know how to balance a checkbook. Yeah, Sarah, you know right. this. When we yes. met, I was up to my eyeballs in debt yep. because nobody ever taught me how to take care of money. Yeah, because you weren't going to need 
to do it yourself. Exactly. Yep. So, like, I had no life skills. That's sad. It, they didn't it, yeah. do anything. Nothing. They just push. I had a complex. I had self-esteem issues, and I had post-traumatic stress mm-hmm. from all of the nightmares about what was going to happen to me when Armageddon came. That's what I left with. Yep. And it's taken years to get through that. So you have to wear a hat and stuff. What? I don't know. <laughs> no, they didn't have special hats. No. Um. So so hat. believers, uh, out there, I do want to talk you out of your God belief. I do because I I don't I don't know that we are using good methods and reasons to come to that belief. Especially and, that and we guy's can have believing. Yeah, that, so, I mean, there's some stuff you can believe. That stuff right there is a bunch of garbage. Yeah, right. Yeah. But like your average everyday believer, right? We can have a conversation about, and you can say, I don't believe that shit at all. That's stupid. Women should be able to do what they want. And that's, they're misinterpreting the Bible, right? Um, I would like to have a conversation with those people about why they believe, not what they believe, yeah. right? Why? So why do you, yeah. Why do you maintain the belief to a high level of, of certainty right. that, it, that, that it's true? using the word true correctly. Um, but guys like this, like, that, this is the reason why it, 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 religion is, religion poisons everything. Mm-hmm. And, and by allowing, allowing's the bad word, but by allowing uh, belief, magical thinking, gods, whatever, to permeate our society enables this guy to, you know, where, where if he stood up on a, on a stage somewhere and said, you know, hey, I have a, a, a green and yellow striped dragon, and my green and yellow striped dragon said some things, and you should believe that I have one. Right. He's an invisible green and yellow striped dragon, but I have one, and you should believe in him, and he's going to do things for you if you believe right. in him. We would have problems with that person. Yeah. And my green and yellow striped dragon, who's invisible, told me that women should be subservient and uh, go make me a sandwich. We would have problems with that. Mm-hmm. All of us. Yes, for sure. We would all have a problem with that. I never like green and red. <laughs> but call the dragon god, and now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. I My biggest problem with all of this is that I think of this guy, and he's up on the pulpit, and he's spewing this bullshit, and he's brainwashing little girls that are sitting out there with their parents, and they're going to grow yeah. up like I did, yep. thinking that, well... I'm going to have to find somebody to just take care of me. Mm -hmm. And that's my whole goal in life is to serve some man. Yep. Right. So stupid. Um, That's not all. Oh, there's more. (laughs) Of course. Uh, North Carolina seems to have time traveled back to some century in the past, but... Um, oh, that's right. You did say there were two. Yes, yes. Oh, God, that was so long, I forgot. <laughs> a North Carolina State House of Representatives candidate who recently won the Republican primary as well has claimed that Jews are satanic, U.S. soldiers are being poisoned by the government, and that God is a white supremacist. Now, I only disagree with two of those three things. <laughs> <laughs> What on earth? All, all kidding aside, Russell Walker won the Republican primary. Of course, his name is Russell. Right? Isn't that the most like <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> southern, uh, <laughs> southern Republican? Uh. Okay. Uh, Russell Walker ru- won the Republican primary, and the Republican Party just kind of went meh until the mm. news uh, started shining spotlights at this guy. <laughs> Isn't that what they did when Donald Trump won? Yeah. The- oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> <Second>. this. <laughs> So uh, Walker says he loves the Confederate flag, re- refers to Martin Luther King as Martin Luther Coon. Kid you not, in a video standing on the courthouse steps, uh, he's, he says uh, he was trying to argue about like taking stat- Confederate statues down or something. And he says, uh, you know, should we just go down to the street here in the Martin Luther Coon Street and take down? Oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Martin Luther King, uh, sh- take the street signs down. That's what he said. Um, he needs to be throat punched. Oh, and he thinks God is a white supremacist. Only then did the party withdraw support for him. Yeah, I would have too. Even though none of that was a secret, but he still won the primary, guys. Walker's website, among the litany of bat shittery, <sighs> says, "What is wrong with being a white supremacist? God is a racist and a white supremacist, and." Someone or some group has to be supreme. 
and that group is the whites of the world. There is no such thing as equality. Someone or something has to be superior, and someone and something has to be inferior. And that quote seems to have now been edited off of the website. Uh, yeah. You way back machine that and, uh, and look at it. Um, but that is, that is this conservative, authoritarian, like, need for something to have control. That's why people, I believe, that's why people turn to religions. They, they, they need to have, and whether it's the supreme authority of God or the authority of the pastor, there, there is this need for a master-slave, controller-controlled relationship in the world. They, they need to have a ruling class and, and a lower class. I just had a thought. Go. I don't have those very often. Um, so Quick, I, write it down. I would love to see the statistics. Somebody has had to have done this math somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So what makes a race in any race supreme? Um, my thought would be which race has the largest population? Mm. Wouldn't that be an indication that they're doing something right? Maybe. In, I mean, I don't know. Would, would Who... Isn't there like right, who determines a, who determines that? But like, what is the biggest population on the planet uh, when you break people down into which race they're from? Is it Asians? Right. India or Asia? India yeah. or Asia? Like those are the those are the countries that are like just super populated. Super populated, right? So maybe we just need to you know give up on this white supremacist idea. Um, let's go exploring here. <laughs> let's go to. Russell Walker's website. Now, this website do we have to? looks looks like, of course we do. Uh, it looks like it was made in Microsoft Word, um, like every like every other phrase is a different color. Is that a um, uniform is with him? That should be a uniform. Uh, no. So the very top, there's a picture of Walker with a white donkey, and underneath the donate button, it says "My little white ass and me." Oh my um, god! Which I think should just say, "Oh look, two white asses." Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, He claims to have an A rating from the NRA, but the NRA doesn't list him. He lists a whole bunch of populist platform ideas, basically ending every tax ever, stopping compulsory fascist auto and moped insurance, and ending compulsory vaccinations. He says he's anti-chemical, claimed fluoridation of the water is poisoning the population. Fluorine is toxic in any amount he says, and he backs this up with, well, Google it. It's all true. Um, and he does say in here he was a chemical engineer. Uh, however, his license is no longer active. Um, uh, regarding vaccinations, he says, I am convinced that vaccinations, especially for young children, create a favorable climate for autism. The government should serve the people and not dictate to us how to care for our children. What the fuck mm. is a favorable climate for autism? Oh my god. Is it like you have to plant the vaccine between like March and May and and plant it in full sun and water it thoroughly <laughs> and cover it whenever there's What the hell is a climate for uh, autism? Obviously this is somebody who does not science. No, but he was a chemical engineer for Christ's sake. Yeah, I don't care what that says. That's all bull donkey listen um you have some stuff in the chat yeah russell wants to know if he can sue him to get him to change his name (laughs) and victoria says different color fonts what a hypocrite exactly (laughs) yeah well it's red and black and blue which Uh you know whatever still it should be it should be all white font and then you wouldn't be able to see any of this shit it would be perfect oh my god be perfect (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh my god mm-hmm. the whole thing just white mm-hmm. now listen to what he said that's clarity the, I don't, oh. the people of this state would benefit from someone in the legislature who has a scientific background i don't disagree with that no but then he goes on to say <laughs> current state issues include fracking offshore oil drilling agreed fluorides in the cape fear river south of fayetteville and the proposed atlantic coast pipeline through eastern north carolina i am very anti-chemical anti-pharmaceutical and will say categorically that fluorine is a toxic poison in any amount 
The fluoridation of water supplies is nothing less than the criminal poisoning of the population. Look up dental fluorosis on the internet. Dental fluorosis. Is that something? It's like, he, link to your he, fucking source. Right? Link to your source. Show me the study. I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, other I'm items. I'm drown myself. He says uh, he wants to deport all illegal aliens. No oh. exceptions. He's an alien. Yeah, some kind of alien. Illegal aliens keep wages low and rents high, in his mind. English, as the official state government language, no Tower of Babel society has ever survived, he oh says. Oh, my God. Electric company smart meters should be op- optional at the customer's request. Smart meters fill our homes with electromagnetic radiation and are dangerous. The house wiring is the antenna. Sir, if you just take off your tinfoil hat for a minute, just a few minutes. Morgan take, wants to know what his thoughts on Flint, hat. Michigan are. Yeah. Well, let's see if he's got anything on there. <laughs> uh, nope. Nothing on Flint. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, okay. All right. I, I don't even know what to say. I can't say anything else about this guy other than he, he's, he's been a whack job. watching too much Alex Jones and he needs to take off the tinfoil hat. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he talks about, like, Gulf War syndrome and Gulf War illness. This guy's all over the fucking place. Uh, depleted uranium, uranium chemistry, uh, term limits. He wants to get rid of term limits. He says, Garland Pierce, this is his uh, Democratic uh, incumbent. Garland Pierce has been in the House for 14 years. Putin has been in office for 18. This is simply too long. Putin? Yep. Vladimir Putin? Yep. What do we have to do with Vladimir Putin, you dumbass? Well, that's what he's saying. Like, that's what's what happens when you let people stay in office for forever. Okay, there's literally four years difference between the two. But I don't see there's, North Carolina no, turning into no communist country. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh. This guy. Uh. So don't think that North Carolina has the market on this kind of lunacy. Oh. Mike Sari, oh. S S A A R I. Okay, yes, I think I saw this guy. Is a racist Christian Republican Michigan yeah. state Senate candidate, or maybe not, who <laughs> thinks it's perfectly normal for adult men to be attracted to twelve year old girls because it's in the Bible. You may oh, remember course. you may remember this guy. I think we talked about him um after the he had a response to the trial of Larry Nasser who yeah. was the gymnast coach guy yeah. that was feeling up little girls or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he said on social media after that that she was wrong to use personal opinion on the record, which I don't terribly disagree with that. But he says, what do you think this feminazi judge would say if her husband asked for a BJ? No way. That got people looking into his social media a little bit deeper, and they found all kinds of stuff. Oh my goodness. One, oh, Jesus. one Facebook post says first it was golf, then hockey, then hunting, now fly fishing. It's amazing to see how this culture desperately struggles to imitate and shadow white people activities. White people activities Wait, what? to allow them nothing without a black presence. I think if white people started walking around with one thumb up their ass and the other in their mouth. There would be plenty of blacks doing the same. Blacks simply refuse. What? Keep hold on. It's this. That's halfway. Oh my god. Blacks simply refuse to allow Caucasians to have anything alone and without them. What like uh, freedom, personhood? It wasn't that long ago. America used to have a small used to have small white towns, only to have the blacks move in and destroy every single one of them while knowing full well they weren't wanted in the first place. Oh my God. Before you start going on the berserk defense, let me just end this by saying I'm not a racist, just speaking some of the facts, and I'm not going to get into the prison percentages of blacks, AIDS, rapes, etc. Let me just say, I'm not a racist, but now let me say some racisty things. He finishes by saying, It's frustrating when society will not lawfully allow whites to have anything of their own without them. But blacks can have BET, black awards, carp fishing, and others. What the fuck? Yep. Okay. 
BET, really, that's a bad example because before there was BET, there was MTV and it played a whole lot of Nirvana and Radiohead sure. and white people music. Right. So BET came along. Big fucking deal. Yeah. Who cares? Oh, my God. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, there's this nugget from the Lord. Woman, because he doesn't know the difference between women and woman. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? Stay in school, kids. Women don't seem to understand that from the very beginning of time, men have taken young girls prior to periods as wives and concubines. Even the Bible talks of this. So don't make it sound like men that are attracted to 12-year-old girls are sick. It's you woman, again, women, it's you woman that can't get a grip on reality is what's sick. It's only normal and you can't change normal for a person's DNA. No, we're not done. We're done. At one point, he dropped out of the race. And then he said he was back in. Uh, who knows if this guy's even really running? It's good. We're coming up on a break. So that'll that'll work. <laughs> um, Russell says, hello, CMT, by the way. That's, yeah, if there's that's the not white people. people yeah, music. hell yeah, Russell. But then, then you know, Darius Rucker had to go make a country album. <laughs> Um, so listen, kids, this is why it's important to know who's on the, on the ballot, who's running yeah, for no office kidding. and what they're about. And you can't just go in there and punch D or R and no call it a day. Because yeah. you could be you really destroying know. some shit going on. You breaking my headphones? No, that's the part that's broken. I didn't oh, really just fired. fell off. Oh, finally. Like okay. Loose tooth. So let's do this. Let's take a break. Break time. Uh, let's get our lunch pails out and have some snacks. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to come back. We have some Jehovah's Witness news to talk oh, about. Um, you'll actually like this one. Oh. And then uh, I think that's it. Then we'll do the Florida Man. We'll be done for the night. So uh, hang tight with us through the break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Sarah Talk. Sarah Talk is made possible by our patrons. We love our patrons. If you're not a Sarah Talk patron, you're missing out. We should do a parody show for bathroom bills at the dog park. Like dogs fighting over which dog yeah. gets to pee yeah. where. Or the owners. <laughs> yeah. I feel uncomfortable that my dog has to shit on the transgendered lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Our Patreon fans get access to special patrons-only content, like this nearly two-hour-long bonus episode where we break down Texas Senate Bill 6, the bathroom bill with our special guest Jake Vahaba. <laughs> My dog hunches over and takes a big runny shit. It's gonna do it with other straight shit dog. Which is the argument I hear. Yes, so. yes, exactly what My I dog <laughs> knows what it is. And it may fuck other men dogs sometimes and pillows and shit. My kid <laughs> But I'm not having my dog shit oh, next to other transgendered hump dogs. <laughs> not only do our patrons get access to all previous patron-only specials for less than the price of a tall whatever Starbucks tries to pass off as a coffee, you'll get an ad-free version of the show, which often includes outtakes and extended segments. And of course, we'll give you a special shout out on the show. Become a patron now for as little as $1 per episode. Go to patreon.com slash saratalk today. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash saratalk. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I was embarrassed and a little scared. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. I thought it would just make things worse. It was tough at first, but I did it. It ended up taking a huge weight off my shoulders. I feel a lot better. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked for help. I asked for help. I asked my aunt. I asked my dad. I asked my teacher. I asked my mom. I asked the Trevor Project. Now, I feel like I can get through this. I know that I am brave. You can do this. You can do this. Ask for help. 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 Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. 
Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. Ask for help. Want to join the conversation or tell Sarah she's wrong? Email producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. Now, more Sarah Talk. Welcome back to Sarah Talk. Dan, you're hilarious. Dan has a post-it note up on the uh, screen blocking the <laughs> Sarah amazing. cam. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to... Um, what happened? How to sync these cameras up so that they they uh, operate. There's no delay. Well. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's like Patreon money we'll spend on that eventually. Someday. Someday. Uh, this was this was literally like a four ninety nine app that I downloaded to my phone that connects my phone through the Wi-Fi to the computer. Yeah. So, it was, I didn't spend a whole lot on it. If it ends up not, not working out. It was four ninety nine. It was only five bucks, yeah. Not even five bucks. Four ninety nine. <laughs> okay. And with your donation, we can get the one at six ninety nine. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's talk about uh, Jehovah's Witnessy things. Oh no. Well, I need Becca back though. She's got to plug in her. Somehow, when I got up. It unplugged your phone. Want me to get it for you? I can have my niece. <laughs> Hold on, is there a video? It's, it's all good. It's all good. Oh my god, but you're never gonna believe this. What, what happened? It wasn't going in, and it wasn't going in. I couldn't get it in the hole. There you go. So you know, <laughs> oh, you, you know how the prongs it. are like two, like this. Uh -huh. I, would, I had it like this. Oh my god! <laughs> you're, I'm a going mess. Opposite. You're so pretty. I Come know. On. Thanks. It's my stylist. He's great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, what happened? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <gasps> oh, I already knew I didn't like your boss, Russell. Wow. Um, you, your boss is obsessed with Starbucks and uh, says. Mm. You drink shit when you show up with Dunkin' Donuts. I love Dunkin' Donuts. Russell asks him his opinion on uh, Tim Hortons, and he said it was Satan's piss. How dare you, sir? Oh, jeez. I love Tim Hortons. God. Tim Hortons is the best. Mm -mm. That guy needs to be fired. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's thingies. Witnesses. When you. Okay. So when you knock, knock, knock on the door. Ding dong. Um, hi. I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. Yeah. Jesus loves you. Here's a pamphlet. What um what sort of information like would you get from people? Like would you write down their their name and their address? So uh, yeah, so usually we would just You could come back to Yeah. Usually we so each congregation is divided up into um it's kind of like city borders. Right. Right. So if you had two congregations in one city, they would draw a map split of the city, half. split it in half, and then... Like an actual map. Or like an actual map. Okay. And then they would take copies of, like, a neighborhood and put it on an actual card about this size, okay. laminate it, and then if you were a pioneer or a brother... Mm -hmm. A pioneer? Uh, if you were just a regular sister, you could not check out a territory card, mm -hmm. what they called them. Mm -hmm. But if you were a brother or a it's pioneer... It's because you're supposed to be at home subservient making sandwiches. Right. So, no, well, the, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, because ahead. you have go to ahead. be able to lead the group. Anyway, they'd laminate this thing, and it came with a little, um, a, pl a clear plastic laminate envelope, so yeah, yeah. you keep your little records inside of it, and you have to work the territory three times, and then you take it back, and you can get a new one. Okay. And usually, you get like three or four streets on a territory card out of a neighborhood. Okay. And then you keep that card, and you have these little slips there called house to house records. Okay. And it's basically a, um like a think Excel sheet type of style mm -hmm. thing. And it's one column is for the house number. One column is for the date of the visit. Mm -hmm. One column is for if there was a placement and then there's like letter codes. So if you placed a book, you write B. If you okay. placed a lit, uh, magazine. Your boyfriend's calling you, you Michael. <laughs> nope. It's somebody trying to get me to buy shit. So I did a, a, a letter key basically okay. for a code for yeah, that. Yeah. And then there was a long thing that said comments. And in that little place you could write whatever comments give, you have give me it. give me a good so, example of what comments you might write you might write um they were gay <laughs> <laughs> i always say i'm gay when i open the door and say, i'm sorry i'm gay you could write um oh, wow. one, I... one thing that we would write uh that was unofficially official was hbh uh-huh and that was um code for home but hiding uh -huh. so if we knew they were home but we knew they didn't answer yeah. the door 
Um, you could write comments like um, loud, vicious dog. Mm -hmm. um, or if you thought they were apostate, you could write apostate. And then if you wrote apostate, what that apostate was an, apostate is basically somebody who was a witness or, or yeah. or So yeah, somebody who was a witness, but left and, and right. doesn't want to have anything to do with it anymore and speaks actively against Simon apostate. Right. <laughs> There, you. Yeah. So if they went to, if they came to my door and I said, oh, yeah, I was raised in that shit, and let me tell you what kind of cult it is, they would write on their little thing apostate. Right. And then that's a red flag for the elders to go back, and then they'll put on the official territory card that my house is a do not call, and that tells everybody who checks that card out, don't go to this house. Okay. Yeah, because they'll get you to come over to their yeah. <laughs> so before So before I get into this story, let me tell you, um, I, I want to say it was the guys over at the Thank God I'm Atheist podcast. Um, so there is a, there's an overlap in the Venn diagram of the Thank God I'm Atheist podcast and, um, shit, what's the other podcast? I don't know. Uh-oh. I have to look at my phone, but my phone's busy. Um, anyway, it was, it was one of their podcasts and they are, they're all ex-Mormons out in Utah. And, uh, one of the, they did like a Q and A, I guess, recently. And one of the questions that came up was like, what do you do when the Mormons knock on your door? Like, how do you, how do you handle that? And this is the best advice I've ever heard. <laughs> they said, um, well, right, so they have to put in so many hours in service, right? They, they're right? just trying yeah. to get their time in, and they really don't give a shit. It's like, if the if it's these kids, if it's if it's genuinely like the the kids, they don't yeah. they don't care. They just they have to do it because they they're told to do it, right? right? Um, so he says he says here's what you do. Uh, you open the door and you say, hey, listen, uh, really not interested in your religion. Um, but I've got some yard work that needs done. If you if you would if you'd be interested in helping out, like I need my yard mowed. There's like some bushes that need trimmed, and you know you could paint my fence. Um, I, I that'd be cool. You could help me with that because they're they're looking to put in like service out, like actual like community Time, service hours. Right. Um, I, look, I'll give you you know something to drink and I'll make you, you make beer. you some food. You're like <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you know, I'll, uh, you can have uh, all the water you want, and uh, I'll make you something for lunch, and you can just help me out around the house. That'd be great. And Don't they'll do me. it. Yeah, and they'll will. do it because they're just trying to put the hours in. <sighs> Man, really? I need to remember right? that. That's what I'm saying. Okay, Her, so that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I'll be like, you know what, my dog needs to be washed. Right, got all kinds of stuff. I've you got can, my car can, can be washed, vacuumed it out, and <laughs> you can even take a shower after you're done. You get all of that. Yeah, off. yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, so this story is more about um, that knocking on the doors, talking yeah. to people, um, and and the information collecting specifically. Yeah. We we would limit it to like. It was weird. It depended on the conversation. If it was somebody where we were definitely going to go back, you kind of would just like take notes afterwards. Like, what okay, if... this was a mom. She has two kids. Right. In such and such age range. Right. We usually never got last names unless it progressed to a Bible study. Okay. Um, but then it was just like general, like, oh, she's into like, you just notice things right. around like yeah. her garden, uh, like she likes to garden, or right. she, you know, stuff right. like that. Stuff that you can Did use you in the next yeah, conversation. Exactly. Right. Did you guys used to get a lot of people? No. Oh, no. 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 Maybe but, one person. Well, per I didn't, but I, because I didn't really care. I, right. I had a book full of placements that and return visits that I would, would I, I, I hated doing return visits. I could never make that second contact. Mm -hmm. And so I would always make an excuse as to, oh, yeah, she's not home this day or whatever. Oh right. no, her car is not there. She told me not to come if this car is there because right. that's her husband, and right. he's like super. You know, I would always yep. make an excuse to not go back. <laughs> okay, so here's why we're talking about this. <clears throat> you may remember that uh, when did this happen? Yeah, twenty uh, last year. So, an EU court recently determined that Jehovah's Witnesses must now ask your permission. Ooh. Before taking down any personal information, nice. You've um, and you've probably gotten if you've signed up for anything that that's anything that uh, with your email address, you've probably gotten fifty million emails in the last year because the EU just changed their laws on data record keeping and yeah. compliance, and so everyone had to send back out, "Hey, we are updated with the new EU policies. Do you still authorize us to?" have this information and here are the things that we do with your information, so on and so forth. Wow. Right? So the court of the justice of the European Union's press release says, 
the court concludes that EU law on the protection of personal data supports a finding that a religious community is a controller, it's the person who controls the data, jointly with its members who engage in preaching or the process of collecting personal data carried out by the latter in the context of door-to-door -door preaching. Okay. Uh, on September 17th, this is from the text of the actual... It's my birthday, September 17th. Oh, good for you. <laughs> like, I don't want to tell you. It's not even close to that. I would tell you happy birthday. No, no. Um, we can save it for later. Okay, good. I'll put that in my calendar so I don't forget. Uh, so this is the, from the text of the, of the ruling. On September 17th, 2013, the Finnish Data Protection Supervisor prohibited Jehovah's Witness religious community in Finland from collecting or processing personal data in the course of door-to-door -door preaching by its members unless the requirements of Finnish legislation relating to the process of personal data are observed, right? So you have to follow the law of the land. You have to... Uh, you have to collect, process, and store the data in the ways that, uh, that it says. The members of the Jehovah's Witness community take notes in the course of their door-to-door -door preaching about visits to persons who are unknown to themselves or that community. Strangers. The data collected may consist of the name and addresses of persons contacted together with information on their religious beliefs and their family circumstances. That's why I asked you what some of the things mm -hmm. that you, you wrote yeah. down. Those data are collected as a memory aid and in order to be retrieved for any subsequent visit without the knowledge, without the knowledge or consent of the persons concerned. Mm -hmm. So you leave the house and you write down, has lots of Disney knickknacks. Right. Into, yeah. into gardening, right? Whatever it is. The Jehovah's Witness community and its congregations organize and coordinate the door-to-door -door preaching by their members, in particular, by creating maps from which areas are allocated between the members who engage in preaching and by keeping records about preachers and the number of the community's publications distributed to them by them. Furthermore, the congregations of the Jehovah's Witnesses community maintain a list of persons who have requested not to receive visits from preachers, and the personal data on that list are used by members of that community. The reference for preliminary ruling from the Supreme Administrative Court in Finland asks essentially whether that community is required to observe the rules of EU law on the protection of personal data on account of the fact that its members, when they carry out the door-to-door -door preaching, may take notes retranscribing the content of their discussions and, in particular, the <clears throat> religious views of the persons whom they have visited. In today's judgment, the Court of Justice considers, first of all, that bold text, door-to-door -door preaching by members of the Jehovah's Witnesses community is not covered by the exceptions laid down by EU law on the protection of personal data. In particular, that activity is not purely personal or household activity to which that law does not apply. The fact that door-to-door -door preaching is protected by the fundamental right of freedom of conscience and religion enshrined in Article 10, Section 1 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union does not confer an exclusively personal or household character on that activity because it extends beyond the private sphere of a member or a religious community who is a preacher. The statement goes on to consider whether the individual members knocking on doors, collecting and processing this data uh, manually constitutes a filing system as described by the law, uh, and they state that it does. Therefore, the processing, it says, uh, the processing of personal data carried out in connection with door-to-door -door preaching must comply with the rules of EU law on the protection of personal data. Then they kind of draw out, like, how they determined who the controllers are in this specific scenario. Uh, but it concludes, the court concludes that EU law on the protection of personal data supports a finding that a religious community is a controller jointly with its members who engage in preaching of the processing of personal data carried out by the latter in the context of door-to-door -door preaching. So basically, no religious exemption. You have to follow these laws, right? So here's what this new law does. In 2016, they passed the GDPR 
which was meant to take all of the data privacy practices from all of these different countries in the EU and make it universal across the board. Some of these changes, and consider this, again, consider this in light of this JW ruling and what JWs do on, on the streets. Breach notification. You've gotten these texts and emails, right? Like, Bank of America has had a data breach. Somebody hacked our system, and they mm -hmm. may have gotten your personal information. Under the GDPR, breach notification will become mandatory in all member states where a data breach is likely to result in a risk for the rights and freedoms of individuals. So if you have personally identifiable information about these people, I think that would, that would count. This must be done within 72 hours of becoming aware of the breach. So we realize, shit, somebody hacked our server. You have 72 hours from that moment to notify anyone who may have been affected. Data processors will also be required to notify their customers, the controllers, <clears throat> without undue delay after first becoming aware of the data breach. Okay, another change is the right to access. Part of the expanded rights of data subjects outlined by the GDPR is the right for data subjects, that's the people whose house you're, you're knocking on the door, the right for data subjects to obtain from the data controller confirmation as to whether or not personal data concerning them is being processed, where, and for what purpose. So you can ring up the J-dubs and say, hey, somebody was at my house. Are you keeping records on me? Where and why? Further, the controller shall provide a copy of the personal data free of charge in electronic format. So you can ring up the J-dubs and say, I understand you've collected personal information about me because your people knocked on my door and talked to me and they wrote some things down. By EU law, you are required to, to uh, now that I've requested it, provide me an electronic copy of all the shit they wrote down about me. They're going to say, I'm sorry they didn't write anything oh, down. Oh, sure they are. Well, if that's going to gonna, that's gonna be really hard to police. Right. Because... It's just a little old lady with a tiny little chubby notebook that mm -hmm. and a pen and a paper and really crappy handwriting. And right. she's going to write, sweet young lady with three little kids sure. took the watchtower sure. and mentioned her dad died. Right. Sure. Like that's what. But, <laughs> but you still have to comply with the law. Yeah, but, but it's. Regardless. Not, you know what I mean? I just, I, I, that's, I'm really curious as to how that. There w I think there would have to be an organized effort from people to, like, request this information, right? be told there is no information, and then, like, push back, push back and follow that up. Because, like, there, I mean, I know that there's a lot going on right now within their, the community. There's been um, talks of bodies of elders being told to, in, to, to like, burn your records. Right. Yes, I did um, see that. In, so in my newsfeed recently, it just makes me wonder. Like, uh, so this comes along, they're going to tell people, okay, you can't, you can't keep records of your return visits anymore. Right. You can't take any information. You just have to remember. Right. Like, and and it wouldn't surprise me if that's the the response, the what they do, and and just change the way they do things because they've already here in the states at least, and I don't know how it is across the sea over there, but. They're coming door to door a lot less. Mm -hmm. I've noticed they leave things in our door, but usually it like the last thing was an invitation to the convention in the summer, right? And then the thing before that was the memorial. They they're not coming to the door as often, and when they are, mm -hmm. they're coming because there's an event they're promoting. Mm -hmm. Um, I see them more now when they're on the streets with their street carts. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, right, if that's not the loophole because if they're at a street cart and mm -hmm. somebody approaches them. You're in public. It's a different right. transaction. It's not you right. going to somebody's private residence. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes up to you, it almost would be like, well, that person should be taking the data. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not the necessarily the witness at the cart because they're just standing there. And when they stand at their carts, they do just stand at their carts and wait for people to approach them. Right. And I know that that has been a long push. Um, for a while, they were reformatting the way that they do that preaching work. So I would be really interested to know mm -hmm. if they're going to just do away with door-to-door -door preaching altogether eventually. Right. That'd be interesting. 
Um, and again, this is this is EU law, right? This right. Is, it's not here. Right. Um, though, this is in, in this is a result of a court case, right? Mm -hmm. So it's we have uh, privacy data privacy laws in mm -hmm. America too. Uh, is it only a matter of time before somebody goes, "Hey, uh, Mormons and J Dubs, uh, meet me in court. We need to talk about, you know, you knocking on doors, writing stuff down." Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, it'd be interesting to see if anyone has has thought of going down that rabbit hole. It wouldn't surprise me, and I know that there are a lot of people in the XJW community that are fighting lots of different fights and starting lots of different fires to right. try to um, sh just shine that light on. Right the fallacies and on the hypocrisies and on the abuse that goes on. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that the mindset of the XGW activists and apostates is any little thing to get attention, you know, just shine the light and then keep looking, you know, like, right. So it wouldn't surprise me if something like that were to come up. I know there was a class action lawsuit that they were trying to work out here. There was one in Canada last year just trying to get as many people as possible to sign petitions and, and right. just try to roll a ball. Okay. And then the final, uh, there, and there are others, but these were the three I picked. Um, the other one is the right to be forgotten, also known as data erasure. The right to be forgotten entitles the data subject to have the data controller erase his or her personal data, cease further dissemination of the data, and potentially have third parties halt processing of the data. That's interesting to me mm -hmm. because I really wonder if that would pertain to someone like myself who Used left be, the church right. and I have a publisher card in my old congregation still because I've never requested them to destroy it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I've heard of people who've written letters and asked that their records be destroyed um, and I've heard of stories where they've, they've found out from former elders that even if you request that they don't do it, mm -hmm. it's always on file. Um, so I wonder if, if that could be an argument there, because there's this law now or whatever, like, mm -hmm. could you, could you fight that? Right. Could I go in and say, you no, could, it's, you're going to sure give me, like you're going to give me my right. things that I know that it's, you know, cause right. it's a hard handwritten copy. It's not a, they're not digital. Right. So I mean. it says the conditions for erasure, as outlined in Article 17, include the data no longer being relevant to the original purposes for processing or a data subject's withdrawing consent. So, yes, like you could go in and say anything you've got that has my name on it, yeah. or my it. information on it, you must destroy. It should also be noted that this right requires controllers to compare the subject's rights to the public interest in the availability of the data when considering such requests. So there you go. That's uh, that's uh, the, this new EU law in, uh, in opposition to uh, the Jehovah's Witness. I think that's interesting. That I do. I, I think it's very interesting. I, I wonder what it will take to for that to happen over here. Like, yeah, just that would be amazing. Yeah. Okay, I have two things left. Let's do the Florida man first. Okay, well, and then and then I just have an I have an update from someone that we'd interviewed a while back that I wanted to kind of share with everybody. Do I need to preface the Florida man situation this yes, week? Yes, please do. So last week we tried something new, and it went really well. And we each picked a Florida man story without the other knowing, and it was awesome. And we were going to do that again this week, but I forgot to look up any Florida man stories. So Sarah, like the overachiever that she can be, has all of the Florida I always, man stories. Well, prior to last week, <laughs> I come I always come up with all of them. I know. So No, I know, but I was really I excited mean, about it. I, I thought it was really cool like yeah, to change it, it up and yeah. then I failed and I dropped the ball. So I apologize. I'll put it on your calendar. You dropped the I, ball. And I'm going to try very hard next week to get a really awesome Florida man story for She my dropped her balls and pink. now she's trying to pick them back up. But and and to be fair, I don't I don't come up with all of them. Uh, people send them to us too. I send a lot of them to you. You do too. send them a lot. Yes. Um, so <laughs> so, uh, so let me address that too before we go on. <laughs> uh, I try. There is this this fine line uh, that I try to walk, where we I want to make fun of 
people in Florida doing stupid things, right? The And my intent, my hope is that I find stories where it's people doing stupid things, mm-hmm. that the, the things are stupid and and not for any flaw or fault of the, like, you know what I mean? Like, so one story that was popular this week, like, Two or three people sent it the same sent in the same story, and I get it. It was good. Um, was a story about a uh, Miami man. Yeah, it was Miami. Um, who stabbed a dude? Uh, he has no arms. Stabbed another guy with, with a pair of scissors in his feet. Ugh. Right. This guy's no arms and he's homeless. To on top of it, like when I read the headline, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. And oh, then I, I opened too. the article and, and I was I like, it, oh yeah. shit, this. He was homeless, sleeping on the street, and somebody approached him for something, and he reacted violently. I can't laugh. At, I can't make fun of that guy. I can't do it. Yeah. It was yeah. rough. It has a good makings of a good laugh, but it doesn't finish off that If way. it yeah. was any other thing, if it was, it was like survival. some, if it was, if it, if he hadn't been homeless and if he'd he gotten in an altercation with his broken, girlfriend and, you know. Yeah. I can see. He's at the strip club. <laughs> he stabbed somebody with his feet. Like, he, wanted, make his, one up. he wanted his dollar back. <laughs> yeah. So, so. Uh, but at the same time, bear that in mind when you. Thank consider... you, though, for oh, sending God, yes. in please stories. In, please like, send stuff. Don't get all upset that we didn't like your stories. Keep them sending them, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. So we'll start with uh with the first story. A 91 year old man, Cornelius Jones. From Lacucci, Florida. A Lacucci. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thought that a pastor was involved with his ex girlfriend. Okay. So, Saturday afternoon, he goes on down to the New Bethel AME Church in Lacucci to find out why she was at the church, and the pastor approached them when he heard Jones' voice. That's when Jones stood up, held a handgun over his head, and threatened the pastor. Jones was arrested and charged with aggravated assault. Why do you care what your ex girlfriend is doing, dude? Yeah. Oh, it's not even his girlfriend. It's ex girlfriend. Yeah. It's his ex. Yeah. Who cares? Well, you know what? So he goes he down Jesus. to the church and like pulls his gun out. Gosh. He's like, "You're supposed to do worse. Not go up, get Jesus on me." <sighs> wow. Right. Uh, the second story: an elderly woman in Vero Beach said that a man broke into her home got naked, and made himself a plate of spaghetti. Why do these stories always come back to spaghetti? Do you remember the guys that broke into the house that were stealing shit? Yes. That was a funny story. It was something about this, uh, made he, spaghetti yeah, and like, tried to catch it on he, fire or yeah. something? Who cooks spaghetti, Who cooks spaghetti at, at 2, at o'clock, two in o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Italians. 29-year-old Samit Amit Irving uh, ran into her house and said, don't say anything. The police are after me and are outside right now. I can't leave. She said, while inside the house, he boiled some water and made himself a bowl of spaghetti. Then Irving got undressed in front of her, washed up in her bathroom, and walked around the house naked. After finishing his spaghetti, he got dressed and fled the home. The woman ran outside, flagged down a deputy who had been searching for him. Deputies picked him up a few streets over. He told deputies that he was at a friend's house where he ate spaghetti and bathed but could not name the woman nor how they met. Irving was arrested for an outstanding warrant and charged with felony burglary, theft, and exposure of sexual organs. He also needs to be put into a mental institution because he's got some shit confused. (laughs) Okay. And the final story. A Florida man was stopped by police after a woman told 911 he had hit her bumper numerous times while waiting in the drive-thru at McDonald's. (laughs) (laughs) According to police reports, Earl Gustavus Stevens of Vero Beach smelled of alcohol and was slurring his words. A bottle of Jim Beam was sitting in the passenger seat next to him. Oh my God. And he admitted he had been drinking. But when asked if he was drinking while driving, Stephen said no. The officer's report says, quote, he further explained that he was not drinking while the car was moving and only when he stopped for stop signs and traffic signals. Oh, my God. (laughs) No, officer, I wasn't drinking and driving. I stopped at the stoplight, and then I drank, and then I drove again. 
Um, so the, the, the law about not drinking and driving is not the same <laughs> as the to, law about <laughs> not texting to, and driving. They need to put that you can a, text a flaw, at clause stops. underneath that. <laughs> wow. Don't drink even if you're in the car and it's parked. <laughs> oh. Right? America, we got to get stupid oh. with you. Oh Stevens was arrested and charged with drunk driving, of course, and also driving without a license. Oh, Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. And now he won't be doing any of that stuff. Okay. Um, Choices tonight are. Hey, that's my Lacucci. Oh, I love this. Or maybe, (laughs) or maybe ex Lacucci, I guess. That's my ex Coochie. Uh, a quick bite of Paschetti. Or red light liquor. Your choices for tonight. I think it's a red light liquor. It's definitely red light liquor. It's a, it's a threesome. (laughs) <laughs> it's a threesome, y'all. We got it. Oh, right. my gosh. I'll put that up in the group, and uh, everybody can vote yeah, on it there, too. Yeah, absolutely. Dan says, mocking spaghetti eaters and drunk drivers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what the hell? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, now, we're going to wrap the show here, um, but before before we do that, I wanted to give you an update from... Uh, do, you, do you remember... Uh, the Blake family, friends of the show. Uh, we talked to them. We talked to James. It was like ages ago. Uh, episode so, fifty-four so back in May of twenty seventeen. So, I, and I try to I try to keep in touch with them from time to time. But um, and I still get updates. He posted an update uh, to their GoFundMe, and I wanted to share some of that. Now we talked to James. Dan, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We take we t- uh, we talked to James that it, it, both he and and Catherine are trans. Uh, they and that, that we talked about the story of how they got together and their family issues and how they became homeless. It's the, the and the two, two trans, trans one van one van got right it. yeah across across the country living in their van with their two children, um, and all of those challenges that came along with that journey. Um, so I wanted to give you some updates on that. Uh, Catherine is now the training coordinator and lead of the soon-to-be-launched Friends and Family line with the Trans Lifeline. Awesome. So that's great news. James has been working on a volunteer basis with the Trans Empowerment Project for the last eight months um, and has been promoted to vice president yeah. and uh, is still volunteer, but he is hopeful that there's, uh, there's some grant money pending that they're hoping gets approved. What episode was it? Do you have the notes yeah, there? Yeah, episode 54. 54 for anybody who wants to go back and get a refresher. I think Dan just said who, yeah. and I think that's what he was talking about. Um, so so that's awesome. Hopefully that grant funding will come through and yeah. he can get paid for doing you know. Yeah, absolutely. And the I, and maybe the best news, they've been housed for 13 months. Yay! Right? Isn't that awesome? That is amazing. Uh, so that was a struggle uh, for them. Yeah. Out of the van, not on the streets. Yeah. In an apartment. In a bed. It's great. It's that's, so good. That's good. So they're doing well, but they're not out of the weeds <laughs> yet. Um, and I'll put a link to their GoFundMe, and um, they have a Patreon too, but nobody signed up for that yet. So sign up for that if you can. Um, I'll put all that in the show notes. James said his license has been expired since August, and their income only covers bills and food at this point. Um, so and they also still owe some money to a friend who helped them out Uh do you remember we talked to they got their van was impounded yeah the van mm-hmm. got towed yeah and so um so they're still trying to pay a friend back for helping them get their van right. out the tag expires next month and oh. and so if the tag expires the apartment complex is just going to tow it again and they're mm. going to have there and there's another added cost yeah. of, you know to get it back out um and and that that is kind of the challenge of uh, of the cycle right this is like a this is like a cycle of homelessness, of poverty, of um, where he, they're doing the right things. They're trying to, right. you know, they're they're trying to be gainfully employed and do the right things. Be self-sufficient have, yeah. and take care of things. Yep. And it's just... And, and it's it's very easy for you one little thing to crash yep. that whole house of cards down. Um, so click back over to ec- episode 54 if you haven't heard it yet. Um, they, this family has really been through it. They've been mm-hmm. through the ringer, and um, and it's circumstances that nobody deserves to to ever have to deal with. Um, but and they, yet they stay positive, and they're volunteering for organizations that, you know, with their time, these nonprofits that, and, and while seeking uh, gainful employment, and you know, and trying to 
to cover their expenses and and they've come a long way since we first met them and i'm excited that they've that they've really come that far and they're they're doing a, a lot better um and i just wanted to say like it's really amazing how much just a little effort on our parts can make a big difference in somebody else's life uh so you know let's keep let's keep empathy uh let's keep empathy alive like probably many of us are one crazy thing away from losing your home and being right in the situation that that this family was in uh if i got fired from my job tomorrow yeah i, I don't know what we would do we don't have enough money to like pay the bills for very long while also looking for you know while yeah. while trying to find another job and and finding another job that would pay what I'm making now right. and, and you know just being able to uh to to keep the lights on and and I think a lot of us are living that close to to being in a really bad situation mm -hmm. so when I think about people who are going through some shit like I I, I can empathize I think Absolutely. about like Jesus Christ I, I what would it be what would my life be like if I had to go through that I would want people to help me and so uh, so again, like we're on the edge, right? Like we're, we're not in the greatest situation either, but if we can help in any little way, if it's going to their Patreon and doing a dollar a month mm -hmm. and you can do that, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. And, uh, and I think we should all go do that. So there, uh, and again, I'll put it, the links in the, the show notes. The GoFundMe is gofundme.com slash Blake, B-L-A-K-E fam fund. If you want to check that out. Um, I want to thank all of our patrons in no particular order because I didn't type it out this week. <laughs> uh, but we we haven't been reading the names every week, so I wanted to to kick it out here now. Uh, we want to thank Russell, part time patron Russell, the Wayward Willis podcast, uh, Mandy. I never saw that. They're not. I'm. It's hard to read. <laughs> I never saw that podcast. Dan, Eric, Stacy, Megan. Harry, Josie, Andrea, AJ. This is so hard when I don't type it out ahead of time. And Lamont. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> supporting us financially and, and uh, keeping us going here. And, um, and, and again, like we will put that money back into the show. We used that for our uh, events that we go and do. Um, we just transferred our hosting service mm -hmm. to a better hosting company so that uh, so everybody gets a little benefit out of that. Um, and, uh, and that's all because of the patrons. We would not be doing this if not for you all. So, yep. uh, thank you so much, Michael. Thanks for coming in again. It's been a long, yeah. too long. We need to make family hair appointments. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that could be a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh my God. Right. Uh, we'll do a patron only, uh, <laughs> hair, uh, cast. hair cast. Hair cast. Yeah. Hair cast. That'd be funny. <laughs> All right, let's round out the show here. Thank you to um, again to our patrons. Thank you for all of you for listening here on the Facebook live stream. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I will try to sort out the Sarah cam so that maybe there's not a terrible delay in the future. We'll see if I can work that out. I don't know. Uh, next week, Kaylee Fry and Heather Bryant will be on the line to talk about Collage. That's an organization that supports LGBT youth. Sorry, supports youth with LGBTQ parents. Yeah which is pretty awesome. The following week, Adam Burns of Pride 48 fame will join us. That'll be fun. And uh, we'll talk about conversion therapy and so much more. We'll talk uh, to you next week. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you then. You've been listening to Sarah Talk. Sarah Talk is made possible by listener support. Visit patreon.com slash Sarah Talk to become a patron and help keep this program going. Contact Sarah and company by email at producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. And follow us on social media, facebook.com slash Radio, and on Twitter, at Saratalk Radio. Saratalk is a production of Sarah Austin Media.